On to the coronation, and we know that Prince Harry is going. Um, there has been a bit of backwards and forwards about how long he's staying and, and the extent of his involvement. Where has that finally landed? Well, Prince Harry has no role, effectively, in the coronation ceremony. Um, he's expected to be in and out of the UK within under 20, 48 hours, um, and he's expected to um, head back to Montecito to celebrate his son Archie's fourth birthday. Um, he will not be in the balcony. He will not take part in any of the coronation ceremony in any way, shape or form. He's basically like a guest. Um, and reports have come out that this actually was to make King Charles happy. Apparently, the relationship between Harry and his brother William is still on rocky territory. Um, we haven't heard any news from Buckingham Palace regarding whether there will be a meeting or any sort of reconciliation attempts or anything like that. Um, so it's very, it's clear that it's a very, you know, quick trip in and out. Um, and that's very telling about where, you know, the Sussex is particularly, the, where the role is within the royal family, which is effectively nothing. Um, King Charles has made it very clear that he's always wanted to slim down the monarchy. And that's clearly what he is doing. Um, in his New Year's speech, he, you know, wished his son and Meghan well while they build their life overseas. But it was really just one line. Um, so he's made it very clear that since the Sussexes have decided to leave the royal family as active working members of, of the firm, they will have no place, um, not in the coronation ceremony and certainly not in future engagements, which is quite unfortunate. Now, on to Charles, and there's this, there's this great uh, footage of Charles as an 18-year-old. I like to think of it more as a, as a family rather than a firm. I think my family is very special people. And in that sense, I'm only beginning to see um, my parents and the rest of my family as other people, do you know what I mean? Esther, do you think those sentiments would remain in Charles? And if so, do you think that that will impact the way he guides the royal family going forward? Um, you can certainly see reflections of, of that sort of sentiment in his day-to-day -day life. Um, the fact that he even wanted Prince Harry at his coronation ceremony shows that he really does see his family as something to be cherished and he's really trying to treat it more as a family than a firm, even though it is effectively both and he is both leader of his family and the firm. Um, clearly, you know, Prince Harry has different views on that and the extent to which he thinks family should take precedence over the firm or really to which the extent to which both of them even relate to each other. Um, but it's clear that with, with King Charles's very unique upbringing, knowing that he was always destined to be the monarch, um, it's quite heartwarming to know that he had a view of his family as more of a family than a firm. Obviously, that dynamic of that has changed significantly. Um, but it, it is quite heartwarming to see those sentiments being resonated. I think you make a really good point there, Esther. Um, uh, in my view, it really softens Charles, you know, particularly given how loved the Queen was. And Charles has got... Uh, big shoes to fill. Uh, what do you think? I think you're absolutely right. I think it does humanise him to a large extent. Um, I mean, this is a family that are still very traditional, still very hierarchical. This is a family that writes letters to each other. Um, and these are the kind of correspondence that the, the media uses to actually tell what relations are going on within the royal family. Um, but just to know that this is what he thought and he really tried to view his family as a family more than a firm, um, it really does humanise him and it, it, it creates, a, you know, a different perspective into what life in the royal family is like, especially now that he is a leader of both the family and the firm. Now, uh, while we're focusing on the coronation, we are hearing that the royal family is ready to crack on with core business once it's done. Um, what's the view? Well, yes, I mean, the, the coronation is not without its controversy. You still do have Republicans that are not too keen on the royal family. Um, but overall, it is, uh, you know, very much looked forward to event. Um, but the reality is they have to get on with business. They have a lot of engagements um, to do this year, um, particularly uh, because their workload has really increased substantially with the exit of the Sussexes. I don't think most people understand that the Queen was very keen to have the Sussexes play a significant role in representing her and the family in the future, just because of kind of, um, you know, the, the positive benefit they would have from having the first biracial woman in the royal family and Harry, who was at the time one of the most popular members of the royal family. Um, so the fact that the, the monarchy is going to be slimmed down and it's going to pay, play more central roles in, in effectively British diplomacy, uh, their workload has increased uh, to a significant degree. So I think they'll be quite keen to, to show that it's business as usual and it's not just all the pomp and circumstance of, of, of coronation ceremonies. So lastly, uh, 
William has a special role during the coronation service. Can you tell us about it and what's its significance? Yes, so we know that uh, William, as the future monarch, does have a quite a central role in, in the monarchy um, and in the royal family. And in this ceremony, he will be participating in the section known as the homage of royal blood, where he'll be effectively uh, swearing his loyalty to the king, um, which is quite a central uh, part of this ceremony as, as the future monarch himself. Um, and look, it has been clear that William was going to always take a, part, a central part of this uh, ceremony, as well as his son, who will also be the future monarch and who is second in line to the throne. Um, and it kind of just shows the contrast how, you know, he went from effectively being third in line and having a very significant role in the royal family to now really being at the center of it. Um, his father is clearly in his 70s um, and his reign will be shorter than his, his mother's reign. Um, so he will have a central role both in the ceremony and in future royal engagements uh, to come. Esther Kraku, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I look forward to chatting with you next time.